Hello, you're watching Low Batteries, a look at video games and mental health. This is the fourth episode now, and over the course of producing this series, I've been lucky enough to hear some incredible stories from people who struggle with mental illness. These messages cover a wide range of topics and disorders, but one of the most common ones people mention is anxiety. A surprising proportion of the people I've met during my time in the games industry, in fact, have been anxiety sufferers, myself included. With that in mind, I decided to take a look at the representation of anxiety in games, then have a quick gander at some of the games people use to help cope with their anxiety, whether that was the developer's intention or not. But first, let's define what anxiety actually is. Anxiety is, essentially, a state in which the brain and body anticipate a future danger or threat. If you picture fear as the emotional response to an immediate threat, whether real or imagined, anxiety is the sense of dread that comes before it, the part where your senses are likely heightened and your body is tense in anticipation of something bad happening. Because it's tied into our basic self-preservation instincts, anxiety can be a useful feeling in certain situations. This is why people say it's always good to be a little nervous before you go on stage or take an exam, for instance. Where it becomes problematic, however, is when the feelings of anxiety are persistent and or out of proportion with the actual risk posed by the situation. Being anxious when stepping into an enclosure with a semi-wild animal, for instance, would be useful. Finding yourself on the edge of vomiting because you're about to walk into a pub full of people, on the other hand, is not helpful and can prove extremely limiting. I can speak from experience there. That's the basic foundation, but it's the sheer variety of things that can cause anxiety, and the severity of the reaction, that makes anxiety such a multifaceted disorder, with several different types commonly diagnosed in patients. For the context of this episode, we'll mostly be talking about generalised or social anxiety, a disorder which was recently covered in Twine game Rake. Rake is a game with two separate narratives that progress simultaneously. One is written in English, the other in Scots. The one written in English is set in an absurd Celtic fantasy realm as a warrior reaches the end of her quest for the legendary Staff of Salmon. The one in Scots follows a modern resident of Edinburgh who suffers from panic attacks and is just trying to get through the day unscathed. You can flick between these narratives at will, but the game also bounces you between them at certain points, and the contrast between them is kind of eye-opening. The medieval hero's story, written in plain English, catalogues an experience you or I will likely never have, a dungeon crawl, but one we're nonetheless used to experiencing through video games and popular culture in general. It's a tale fraught with peril, for sure, but it's nonetheless a familiar one. It feels comfortable and safe. Oftentimes you know which is the most sensible path for the hero to take, even if it turns out she's going to get hurt anyway. The modern narrative, written in Scots, however, explores an experience countless people have every year, but one we very seldom talk about. You're walking. You're on the windy, you see the grey, blue of morning. You yoke. You're racked with the echoes of the other day's panic attack. See your limbs, stooting head, doots in mind. It's half seven. And you put in your glasses and you can the question. You will not be able to shake this ampo day. You can it will. It's also a bit harder to read, both in terms of the language itself and predicting what the best course of action is. As you try and make decisions that will help you marshal your anxiety and get your day back under control, there's an increasing sense that there are no right answers. No magic solutions to anxiety that will help this woman rein in the rampant fear responses she's experiencing. There are several points where telling someone about your anxiety is presented as an option, but on clicking it proves not to be possible, because it's really hard to talk about anxiety. But what exactly makes Rake so powerful? I've already mentioned the game tosses you between narratives at certain points. A conversation with your boss about how you're feeling, for instance, becomes a battle of wits with a riddling demon who demands you answer cryptic puzzles in order to avoid getting murdered. Entangling these two narratives, each of which is familiar and yet alien in its own way, it elevates the narrative of trying to get through a day swamped by anxiety to the level of a heroic quest. Because, as anyone who suffers from anxiety will know, sometimes trying to survive a day with particularly bad anxiety is like taking on a heroic quest. Someday you wait into this bumming on the background. No, you can't. What you'd feel? You'd feel anything you do. You'd mank it. No, there's no way. No way out. And no, you should can. You should just gee no, gee way, gee over. You progle at your phone to soothe your thoughts. 
but scan distraction. If you can get to have five, maybe you can get to dinner. Then maybe you can get to bed. Feelings of anxiety are so often articulated by self-loathing. Anxiety attacks make you feel tiny, wretched and useless. The feelings snowball in a way that leaves you feeling empty and entirely without merit. It convinces you as a sufferer that your story isn't worth telling. Anxiety has an awful way of being exhausting and requiring superhuman effort to conquer, but also convincing you that it's not okay to admit it's a struggle at all. It's a secret illness in many ways, but here we are, experiencing the story, acknowledging it, and through the challenge presented by the game mechanics, recognizing that it's hard. Rake validates the story and the struggle of its anxiety sufferer, who is in many ways every anxiety sufferer, underlining that it's okay to talk about that kind of thing, even when anxiety can close us up and make us feel like it's not worth burdening others with. Unlike its medieval counterpart, the victory at the end of the anxiety narrative is written in a very understated way, but the sense of relief that comes with it is as potent as retrieving the greatest of treasures, because it's all about survival, and you've survived. Now, as I've mentioned, Rake is a game that does a very good job of showing someone what it's like to suffer from anxiety. It's so convincing, in fact, I had a small panic attack while playing it, actually, so if you've come to this video as an anxiety sufferer looking for games to help, Rake is not the answer. With luck, however, the games covered in the rest of this episode will prove useful. Some games are designed with anxiety sufferers specifically in mind, hoping to give them something to focus on while trying to manage their symptoms. The best known of these is probably Flowey. Flowey is very simple. You keep your thumb on the screen as a ship travels along the sea. A cloud follows behind, breathing in for three seconds, then filling the sails with an outward gust of wind for three more seconds. As you steer the ship past rocks and other hazards, you breathe in time with the cloud. It's a way of guiding you through controlled breathing, one of the most common methods for dealing with panic attacks, while distracting you just enough to keep your mind off the immediacy of your anxiety and helping keep invasive thoughts at bay. I've used Flowey a number of times while out and about, and it's very calming. It's also very obviously a game, making you look like a bored commuter rather than someone trying to sit out a panic attack. That anonymity is in itself very comforting. Mobile developer Us2, responsible for the excellent Monument Valley, has produced two apps aimed at improving mental health. The first, designed to calm your active mind, is called Pause. Pause involves moving one finger slowly around a mobile screen, manipulating colourful elements as you do so. The second is a more involved approach called Mood Notes. Mood Notes is an interactive version of Thought Records, a technique used in cognitive behavioural therapy and something I talked about finding extremely useful in episode 2 of Low Batteries. In prompting you to record how you're feeling and what's making you feel that way, Mood Notes enables you not only to track how you've been feeling over the days, weeks or months you've been using the app, but also gently teaches you how to recognise what makes you anxious or sad and why, in turn helping you to do something about it. Unfortunately, Pause and Mood Notes are only available for iOS devices, but there are alternatives for Android users too. I used T2 Mood Tracker while coming off antidepressants a year and a half ago and found it pretty useful. Of course, not every game you play to help combat anxiety has to be specifically developed with that in mind. A whole host of games can be useful in tackling anxiety, similar to the concept of the sad game we discussed in the very first episode of this series. Eurogamer writer Bertie described these games as brain stillers, which I think is a pretty excellent term. As I said earlier, a little gentle distraction can sometimes be a great first step in bringing one's anxiety under control. Bertie, for example, uses Stick It's, which is a simple yet challenging puzzle game. I myself have poured countless hours into Triple Town, which is a lovely and thoroughly addictive puzzle game from Spryfox. Triple Town can help me enter a trance-like state in which I focus on placing objects for a while. Nothing more, nothing less. There's something about the simplicity that's just really good for quieting my brain. As with a lot of mental health issues though, it's about finding what's right for you. Experiment until you find a game that helps distract you best. If that's not Triple Town or any of the ones featured in this episode, that's fine. Just try to remember to be kind to yourself. It sounds obvious, but it's something anxiety sufferers can find extremely easy to forget. As ever, if you're suffering or you know someone who is, don't carry on in silence. You can find links to a number of mental health resources in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and take care. Hello, this is Chris Brett from Eurogamer, joined by the lovely Martin Robinson. Hi. Hello. Hi, Hi. Sorry, that's my cute say hello, wasn't it? Hello. <laughs> Usually when you say the name, yeah, that's that's a good time to jump in. And we're going to be talking about Homefront Revolution, specifically the multiplayer side of that game, which you've been playing, and we have some video of right here. Uh, that says very like boldly at the top, beta assets, not final content. 